Hello there! So, Russian mapping is one of those common osu mapper terms without a concrete definition. Instead of only meaning the obvious, Russian maps are maps made by Russians, people use it to describe a type of mapping, and the elements of that type of mapping vary a bit depending on who you ask. This treatment applies to a lot of region-based mapping. People talk about Chinese mapping and European mapping and whatever else with equally vague definitions, but I'd say Russian mapping is a classification used more than others nowadays, and so I've been interested in learning more about it. That being, I asked a few Russian mappers some questions and organized an interview with some other Russian mappers to widen my perspective on this whole thing. Uh, name's Ru. I was actively present in the OSU community like 2010 through 2014, and I made just a few things, but turns out they had quite an impact, so here I am. Hello, you might know me as Evil Elvis. I have no idea how to pronounce my current nickname, sorry for this. And I am a mapper, I guess. I'm Nateke, or Nateke. I used to make pit maps for Aosu from about 2010 until about 2014-ish, but peaked about 2011. Uh, well, my first language is Russian, so I used to hang out in the Russian chat. I mingled a lot with like both of these guys, and we know each other quite well. First things first, Russian mapping is an ambiguous topic, so we need to lay a basis for what we're talking about here. We need to establish what elements of mapping make up the, quote, Russian style. When mentioned about maps today, people consider some of its most iconic features to be slightly bent sliders, weird spacing emphasis, and linear patterns. There's of course a lot more though, including some stuff that modern mapping doesn't really consider too closely. 1.4 SV. That's for me. That's 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 the most defining feature. Yeah, because with, with 1.4 SV, you're you're very limited in what you can do with the map, and it just so happens that this old Russian style works really well with slow sliders. <laughs> But for me personally, I find the most iconic feature of Russian mapping because it's original rhythm concept. You see, most of people bugs them were mapping more melody rather than drums. Uh, also, I think it sounding was probably one of the most important things back then. Yeah, some of people used to make their maps like add to the music instead of represent it. But that's, that's more to do with hit sounds rather than the sliders and the circles, I think. I'm not sure if that kind of thing would work these days because everyone's got those <laughs> hit sounds. <laughs> that's, also, that's also one of the reasons why I don't really, I don't bother with this anymore. Like I start them up and I think I'm going to make the best fucking hit sounds possible. And then I realized no one's going to hear them. Everyone disables the uh, stock, whatever you call it, the default hit sounds. So all that work is, is for nothing, really. And that's only scratching the surface. When asking other Russian mappers about some standout Russian mapping traits, I got a few additional answers, including tons of square-like patterns, big emphasis for sounds on slider tails, relatively complex hit sounding, and spacing emphasis based on a song's intensity more than individual sounds. If you're a mapper of any kind, you probably notice that nothing here is especially unique. Like, there's tons of maps that use one or more of these mapping techniques. Each of them alone isn't special, however combining most, if not all of them, is what can make a map potentially fit the Russian style. And the roots of that style stretch far back. During the interview, I think Niteka described this way of mapping pretty effectively. Yeah, I think this conventional old-school Russian style is pretty much a relic of the past. What people call Russian mapping originated in 2009 or 2010 and was built on for the next three or four years. I'll explain more about why I think that soon, but the first clue should come from the mappers who helped define and eventually popularize Russian mapping. Oh boy, James. For sure, 100% James. If you open Bad Apple, the Namiko, the old one, 2009 I think, or even 8, I'm not sure. And if you look at that map, it's got everything. The bent sliders, the hit sounding, 1.4 SV, squares, it's got everything. It's basically every 2009 to 2013 Russian map backed in one. The next one, uh, that would be Teeth. He also copied a lot of James stuff from back in the day, including this Bad Apple one. Teeth is the first, I would say he's the first Russian mapper that became sort of mainstream, or at least somewhat popular. And he's the first that utilized those elements, those James and Less You and Alice and Happy 30 elements. He kind of brought it all together, at least for me. Le Catiline, or LC, is one of the biggest names often associated with Russian mapping. Not so much for beginning it, but for popularizing it and creating a base on which other mappers built. But uh, in fact, she was like and uh, in a second wave uh, of Russian mappers. Like, uh, I, actually, I know Nateke did uh, influence LC quite a lot. 
Yeah, I remember back in the day I used to throw my favorite maps at her and I told her just copy this stuff and uh, you'll get good. And she did. <laughs> <laughs> I think she was quite unique in, in, in her way of mapping. I, I, I don't think anyone successfully copied her style. Like she was, she was in a league of her own. My roots are in James's, Alazif's, and Alace's style, so if it's fair to assume that I have the Russian style, it's also an old style. That's what Tief had to say when asked about his mapping origins, bringing us back to how I think the Russian style is viewed nowadays. Many elements of the Russian mapping style are distinct and some unconventional by modern mapping standards, but when the Russian style was a well-defined thing in the early 2010s, these techniques were more ordinary and in some cases necessary. Like the 1.4 slider velocity was relevant because minor SV changes weren't a thing. The editor at one point supported only three options for green line SV manipulation, so a lot of these maps were created with a single slider speed. Or there's the arguably most iconic slight curve. Before proper three-point sliders were implemented, high curvature on sliders was impossible to neatly manage, and so these slight curves were more realistic to use. Then looking at mapping conventions, irregular spacing emphasis is kind of weird now, like you rarely see people doing this. Yet you can find tons of old maps that handle spacing emphasis similarly, these Russian maps included, and this is one of the features often associated with modern Russian maps. Hit sounding being irrelevant might be the biggest indicator. Hit sounding that doesn't strictly replicate music note by note was much more common in the past, allowing for all the improvised rhythm seen in these Russian maps, as well as hit sounding that was meant to add to the music rather than just represent it. Some of the best known old Russian mappers, Tief and LC, were known for using this improv mapping slash hit sounding, and this hit sounding method could be connected to both of their passions for music composition. And so what I'm saying here is that Russian mapping is old mapping. Cool. That still leaves some things unexplained though, like why Russian mapping is called Russian mapping if it was utilized by other non-Russian mappers too. This combination of techniques was popularized and commonly used by a lot of Russian mappers, so I assumed it was an issue of language. Like, Russians didn't communicate outside of their circle as often as other mappers because of a language barrier, so they learned from each other. While learning from each other was true, Ryu claims that language had little to do with it. But yeah, back in the day, um, a lot of these small communities, such as, for example, the Russian community, we borrowed ideas from each other quite extensively. I don't think the language barrier is the sole reason it exists. Quite a bunch of the community actually knew their way around English and communicated with other people from other countries, just like Idit or, or Nadeki, for example, or, or LC. I can speak up for, for other people, but for me it worked because I was impressed before I found out uh, those members were Russian. Take Nateki, for example, he's like the first guy I was impressed by his maps and I never knew he was Russian back, back then. Yeah, somehow, somehow all of us happen to find the same things. They happen to find them nice. I'm not sure why. Yeah, it sounds ridiculous, but that's about like true. This is likely why the Russian style isn't limited to Russian mappers, both in origin and after being established. How the Russian style is treated now, long after its creators and popularizers have retired, is also something interesting to cover. What's considered Russian now isn't really the same as what was considered Russian back then. Which should be no surprise, it's a vague term and the definitions of things like this change through their usage. According to Russian mappers though, the region's original style is too different to be associated with maps past like 2014 and pretty much any new maps called Russian today. Well, uh, in my opinion, there is no such thing as uh, Russian mapping anymore. Like, uh, you see, currently, uh, whatever person from Russia maps a map and rank it, uh, he became a Russian mapper. Which is not exactly a bad thing, it's actually quite logical if you think about this. Uh, but uh, to extent when it was such a solid thing, like the older Russian mapping, uh, no, there is no such thing today. Most people consider you like Russian rapper, so they think this is very Russian style. Well, you see, I don't really consider myself a Russian mapper. I don't really follow older ideas. Uh, it's more about visuals. Basically, I use only uh, Russian sliders, you know, and some patterns such as squares. Before I ever started as a mapper, I really liked it to play extreme maps, such as Wells maps, for example. But I never really liked it how this map looks. Uh, I really like it, the Russian mapping style visuals instead. So, whole idea of my mapping back then was creating something in between. 
As for Kalibe or whatever you pronounce his name, sorry Kalibe, I love you. He's kinda try to do the same thing what I do. So if you say he's a Russian mapper, well, he's uh, he's just a mapper who like slightly curved sliders, I guess. So a lot of mappers now known for using a somewhat Russian style may not be doing so in the same way as anyone in the past. They're using what looks like some old mapping techniques, and because those techniques are some iconic ones from what was known as the Russian style at one point, people continue using that name for some maps today. Also, maybe it's just my personal speculation, but changes to the views on the Russian style may have a lot to do with Jonzon himself. He's like an iconic Russian mapper to the mapping community now, whose style has been copied a lot in the last couple years, to the point of kinda redefining some characteristics of Russian mapping beyond what was previously considered. Russian mapping, by that definition, may not be close to old mapping at all. All that said, Russian mapping is a weird thing to try and slap a concrete definition on. If you want to know more though, I really recommend looking at some maps from the, I guess, authentic Russian mapping period, like 2010 to 2014. Not everything can be explained with words, especially things like movement that people find so important to the style. Most maps seen in this video so far, excluding modern mapping examples, are ones recommended to me by Russian mappers as good representations of the style, and you'll find links to them in the description. Anyway, that's about it. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you when the next video is done. It might be next week, it might not. I'm not sure yet. I hope that my, oh, well, they're not mine, but partially, uh, combo colors stay alive, please. Actually, I just want to credit uh, Yeah, Yeah, Yeah with Triple H at the end. He's the man that made those, not me. I just use them, okay? They're not mine.